Having evolved, it is the ultimate fate of all species to go extinct. There are four principal patterns shown by extinction events, which may or may not form a continuum. Background extinctions are local in nature, happening continuously, and lead to the demise of one or a few taxa. Mass extinctions are episodic, geologically fast, global in extent, and affect numerous taxa. Regional extinctions are similar to mass extinctions, but are only regional in influence. For example, the terrestrial fauna of Jamaica was completely wiped out when the island was drowned 50 million years ago. Taxon extinctions are global in extent, but only affect one group of organisms. For example, such events occurred repeatedly during the geological history of the ammonoids. Any evolutionary system can be divided into two parts, the pattern and the process. The dimension of geological time is important in studying both patterns and processes of extinctions. Thus, the process or processes of background extinction driven by physical or biological environment can only be meaningfully assessed by reference to the pattern seen in the fossil record. In determining the processes which drive mass extinctions, the following inferences are important. Mass extinctions are driven by different environmental forces to background extinctions. Further, mass extinctions have different driving mechanisms discernible for different events. Finally, mass extinctions are most probably driven by multiple causes that may or may not be interrelated. There are five major mass extinctions that can be recognised in the rock record, amongst many other less significant peaks of extinction. The late Ordovician extinction, about 445 million years ago, coincided with a period of major glaciation, followed after half a million years by a de-glaciation. The glaciation drove such environmental changes as a global drop in temperature and an associated drop in sea level. The latter had the effect of greatly reducing the areas of shelf seas where much of the world's biomass was then concentrated, at a time when terrestrial organisms were a minor component of the biosphere. The deglaciation, apart from indicating a warming event, also led to sea levels being elevated to greater than pre-extinction depths, effectively drowning shallow shelf areas. The extinction was just delivered as a one-two punch to the marine biota. The late Devonian extinction, about 375 million years ago, was again temperature-related, global cooling being associated with widespread marine anoxia. It did not occur at the end of the Devonian, but rather around the boundary between the Franian and Succedian Fermenian stages, subdivisions of the late Devonian. Again, it was probably not a geologically sudden event, and different groups, such as conodonts, reef-building organisms and brachiopods went extinct at different times about the franium fermenium boundary. That this event was temperature-related is suggested by it causing widespread extinction in tropical reefs and peri-reefal ecosystems. The end Permian extinction, about 250 million years ago, is the largest mass extinction recognised in the fossil record. It may have led to the demise of 96% of marine species. At least nine different driving mechanisms have been suggested. Almost certainly it was the result of the coincidence of two or more of these. This extinction coincided with the formation of a supercontinent, Pangaea, which stretched between the poles. This amalgamation of all continental blocks would have greatly reduced the length of shelf seas available to shallow water organisms. Further, many Permo-Triassic deposits are desert red beds in which paleontological evidence, either body or trace fossils, is rare, thus making recognition of the precise pattern of extinction difficult. The late Triassic extinction between about 220 and 210 million years ago is again difficult to precisely identify and seems to have been a period of high extinction rates. Again, the continents, although beginning to separate, were still in close association and red beds are widespread. A wide variety of marine invertebrates may have suffered extinction in the Carnian more so than the Norian. Many are associated with environmental changes indicated by changes in sedimentary fasces. Good data suggests a widespread increase in rainfall in the mid-Carnian. 
Other features indicate that there was a major marine regression and decrease of habitable shelf area. The N. Cretaceous extinction about 65 million years ago is the only major mass extinction for which multiple lines of evidence of a bolide impact is available, such as a peak in abundance of platinum group elements, including iridium. These are otherwise much rarer in the Earth's crust than elsewhere in the solar system. The search for iridium anomalies at other extinction horizons has failed to produce equally conclusive evidence of impacts. A definite pattern of the occurrence of mass extinctions was first suggested in the late 1970s. However, it did not gain statistical support until early in 1984 in a paper published by David Raup and Jack Sepkoski, both of the University of Chicago. Raup and Sepkoski analysed the last appearance data, that is extinctions, of marine families and found strong statistical indications of a periodicity of mass extinctions, with a frequency of about every 26 million years since the end of the Permian. Suggested driving mechanisms included oscillation about the galactic plane, a rogue planet, Planet X, or Nemesis, a postulated sister star to the Sun with a highly elliptical orbit. However, other analyses question the validity of periodicity. Hoffman considered that the 26 million year periodicity of mass extinctions was an artifact generated by arbitrary decisions such as the geological timescale used and how maxima extinctions are defined. Patterson and Smith, leading experts on fossil fishes and echinoderms, analyzed the quality and accuracy of this database for their areas of expertise. They found that only 25% of the families used by Raup and Sepkoski were correctly dated monophyletic groups. When the 75% of the data belonging to groups that were not monophyletic and or incorrectly dated was removed and corrected from the graph of extinction since the end of the Permian, some of the apparent peaks of extinction disappeared. This suggests that the 26 million year periodicity may be an artifact based on noise in the data set. Most critically, Stigler and Wagner tested the statistical basis for the periodicity of extinctions by examining the distribution of the stratigraphic units, mostly stages, used to arrive at the pattern. They noted that these stages were of differing durations and they randomized the order of these stratigraphic units repeatedly. Stages in which major extinctions were considered to occur were identified, and for each randomized stratigraphic sequence, a best fit for periodicity of extinctions was determined. This is like shuffling the rock record, something you can't really do. The results of these tests were surprising in that 27% of the best fit analyses gave a periodicity of 26 million years, which they concluded was an artifact of the durations of the stages. Thus, Raup and Sepkoski's periodicity may be a statistical artifact. <laughs>